giving all praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles by the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth, honors to the brothers doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which will be the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians who make up the children of Israel, but the one-third of these people who will receive salvation by returning back to the Most High right now. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I think I'm going to title this lesson, The Lord Tried Talking to You People Before and Y'all Messed It Up. Again, the Lord tried talking to you people before, but y'all messed it up. And I was watching some brothers teach, and the brother that they was teaching said, you know, the Bible is cool. He don't really believe it. Although he said the stuff that he was being taught, you know, it sounded correct. But he said that he wants God to talk to him directly. He don't want God to talk to him through man. And I've heard that before in the world. And we know that nobody's thoughts are original. But we gonna show that our people had a chance to speak with the Most High directly and they ruined it. And then, and then the second point, when they could talk to the Most High, they were scared to death. They refused to talk to him. They wanted to deal with Moses. So for the people who feel like when the Lord sends men to teach his people, that's not good enough. They want God to step down from his throne and talk to them directly. That's just an excuse. That's just an excuse to continue not believing and an excuse to continue in a wickedness. Because that's probably the last thing you want is for the Most High to come see you face to face. Because what they think, like the Lord gonna knock on their door with an all white robe, he fresh out the shower, smelling good, got a crown on him. But let me talk to you for a minute, brother. It's gonna be nothing like that after the Lord actually came to talk to you. But also, too, um, who are you for the Lord to step down from his throne? What makes you so important that the Lord needs to come see you face to face? And not to mention, I'm sure it's millions and billions of people who wish they could talk to the Most High face to face. To, to get whatever questions answered that they may have. The thing is, the Lord don't got time for y'all. Y'all wasted his time plenty of times in the past. It is not that he don't got time, it's that he's not going to make time for y'all because he's not about to waste his time anymore. So he sent his men, the servants, the prophets, to speak for him. And we're going to get into that. But let's start off with Exodus 20 and 18. At this point, this is when the children of Israel received the Ten Commandments. We're going to start right in the middle. And all the people, the people of Israel, saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. So they saw the presence of the Lord, but they stood back. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. So the Lord was dealing with Moses and Aaron at that point. And the children of Israel said, You know, whatever God tell you, you tell us. We don't want to speak with the Lord, you know, lest we die. So this shows you that even way back then, what you people 
think you desire, if you was in your right mind or had any memory or actually seen the presence of the Lord, you would not want to talk to him. I can promise you that. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you, meaning to test you, and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. So the Lord was scaring the people on purpose so that they, so that they don't sin. And what, what, and what the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the first step to being accepted of him. So, yeah, it's the fear of the Lord, which is the strongest motivator not to sin. So the Lord scared the crap out of the people. The people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where the Most High was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Dost thou show say unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talks with you from heaven, from that chariot. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. <laughs> so, after the Ten Commandments, after the people say, you know, we don't want to talk to God lest we die, the Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel, don't make any gods of silver, any gods of gold. And guess what the people did? When you forward to Exodus 32, starting at verse 1. Let's see what they did. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, this is Mount Sinai. And the people gathered together to themselves, Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods. Right after the Lord told them, They shall not make gods of God of gold and silver. All right, send it to Aaron, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. So they say, you know, we don't know what happened to Moses. He'd been up in that mountain for a long time. And the most I was dealing with him, which is why he was up in the mountain. But what? Right after the Lord told them, don't make gods of gold and silver, they get Aaron and force him to do what? To make them a golden calf, a god of gold. Right after the Lord told them not to. So even if the Lord did talk to you people, and, and gave y'all some advice or answered your questions or told you what you need to do, you people going to do the opposite anyway. Because y'all don't really mean that, that you want the Lord to come talk to you uh, directly so, so you can straighten yourself out. No, that's just an excuse. That's a bluff. So... When we go, we're going to continue down to verse 12. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And now the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he put an altar before it, and Aaron made complimation, and said, Tomorrow is the feast to the Lord, that golden calf. And they rose up early on the morrow, burnt offerings, burnt peace offerings, and the people sat down, eat, and to drink, and rose up to play. So the people just playing. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the commandment, out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them of molten calf, and have worshipped it. They have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods. O Israel, which have brought thee about the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. So yeah, it's a stiff-necked people, because the Lord appeared to them in thundering 
lightning, trumpet sounding, clouds, smoke, fire, to what? To put the fear of the Lord on them that they sin not. And the Lord commanded them to not make any gods of silver or gold. Even after seeing and experiencing the fear of the Lord, and even after receiving the commandments and the commandment not to make any gods of gold and silver, they did just that. That's why the Lord said, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. So they act like just 12 chapters ago, like they weren't scared to death. But look what they did anyway. So that shows you the rebellions of our people. It's really nothing you can do to straighten them out. The rebellions of our people, they not straightening out now that the, that the, that the truth is on display. And even if the Lord came from his throne to the earth to speak to the people directly, they still wouldn't straighten out. They didn't straighten out back then. Now, let's get this. So, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. The Lord goes on to say, Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them. And that I may consume them, that I will make of thee a great nation. Now I'm going to read this in the NLT on my phone. So the Lord said, now leave me alone so my fierce anger can blaze against them. So the Lord told Moses, hey, leave me alone, stand back, and watch what I do to the people. But then the Lord told, told Moses, you know, of you, I will make a great nation. But see, at this point, Moses had to step in for the rebellions of the people. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out? to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all of this land that hath spoken of will I give unto your seed, that they shall inherit forever. And the Lord repented of the evil, which he thought to do unto his people. So Moses pretty much told the Lord, um, if you kill the people, the other nations going to say, yeah, the Lord brung them out just to kill them. You know, it was no benefit to the people. And Moses also told the Lord, you know, remember the covenant that you made with our forefathers. So yeah, Moses had to step in on the behalf of the people because the Lord was about to, about to destroy them all. And that's why when we hear Habakkuk 1 and 13, thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and cannot look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that do treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devour the man that is more righteous than he. So the focus is going to be the first part of the precept. Thou art of pure eyes, than to behold evil, and cannot look on iniquity. And then in the NLT it reads on my phone, but you are pure and cannot stand the sight of evil. So when the Lord told Moses, um, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, is because the Lord can't stand the sight of evil. You know, he's too pure to behold evil in his face. That's like spitting in the Lord's face. It's pretty much what the children of Israel did. So that's how he was going to destroy them. And that's why the Lord can't talk to you people directly. You know, you people, y'all evil. Not only in your lifestyle, but, but, but your way of thinking, what you believe in. 
But I saw the scripture say, it's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So the Lord can't even behold you people, even if you're not making a golden calf, even if you're just sitting there, the Lord can't behold you. And not in the state that our people are in right now. But when we continue to the book of uh, Exodus 33, this is following them making the golden calf. But let's read it. And the Lord sent unto Moses, depart and go up hence. Thou and the people which thou hast brought up out the land of Egypt unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Until I see what I give it. So the Lord told Moses to get moving, and I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, Hivite, and the Jebusite. That's that pillar of fire by night, pillar of a cloud by day. Cold words for a UFO. So the Lord said he sent an angel before thee. Let's see why. And to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go in the midst of thee. For thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. So the Lord said, I'm going to send an angel with you. I'm not going to go with you, because if I go with you, I'm going to start deleting people. And then in the NLT, it reads, But I will not travel among you, for you are a stubborn, rebellious people. If I did, I would surely destroy you along the way. So the Lord, you, you, you can't be in the presence of the Lord, pretty much. And pretty much, you know, all the, the, the backbiting, the murmuring, and the talking back that the people uh, did to Moses, the people will be doing that in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord knows it. That's why he says, send the angel before you, I'm not going to go. Because at the Lord, Yahweh himself would have traveled with us in the wilderness. Nobody would have made it to the promised land. Everybody would have been killed off. Um, also, too, we're going to jump to the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 4. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. So the Lord... Is not going to tolerate any evil in his presence. That's why he said, um, I would not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Or in other words, I'll destroy you before you get there. Because why? Evil shall not dwell with him. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, and the people are foolish. Completely destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, you know, the Lord wouldn't be able to stand the sight or the conversation of the people to directly speak with them. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So, you and your iniquity, um, the Lord very strongly dislikes you. All right, so now we're going to get to Exodus 33 and 20. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. So people that claim they want to speak to the Lord directly, well, you can't see the Lord and live, let alone speak with him. So that's really the last thing that people um, should be saying. The Lord needs to speak to me directly. That's a proud thing to say. And it's really a bluff because you people don't mean it. But guess what? The Lord snared you. He called your bluff. Because when you're speaking to the men of the Lord, you're in the presence of the Lord. You don't know it, though. But we're going to get here to John 6 and 29. Yahweh Shai answered and said to them, This is the work of Yahweh, the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Another word of work, this is a commandment. It's a commandment of the Most High that you believe him whom he has sent. And the simple Christian 
or somebody that's unlearned will automatically think this is referring to the son of God, Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Jesus. But it's not just him. That would be his servants, his prophets, bringing you the truth today. That's who you're supposed to believe on today. Because the truth servants, the prophets, they're not doing nothing but speaking the same words Yahweh Shah was speaking which was the words that the Heavenly Father told him to speak. And when you hit um, Luke 10 and 16, he that hear of you, hear of me. So if you receive the words of the man whom the Lord sent, you didn't receive the words of that man, but you received the words of the Lord. And he that despise of you, despise of me. And he that despises of me, despises of him that sent me, that's the Heavenly Father. And that's the thing with the people. You know, they can't get us to budge, to agree to the BS that they saying. Or if they feel like they have a hard time getting their point across. Or if they struggling to believe, or they don't want to believe. You know, they pretty much having a hard time conversating with us then they say i just want to speak to the lord directly well guess what if you're having a hard time talking with us you're not gonna have an easier time talking with the lord if anything you're gonna have a harder time because see with us you know we can reason uh take our time Uh, the, 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 the Lord not going to show you that same kind of um, patience that you actually in his sight. So, yeah, if you have a hard time speaking with the men of the Lord who are bringing you this truth, you will have a harder time speaking to the Most High directly. That's why it says, he that despise of you, despise of me. And he that despises of me despises of him that sent me. And, and one might say, well, what makes us so special? Because we got the true understanding of the Bible. You know, what makes us special? Well, when you come to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8, he therefore that despises of, despise of not man, but God. So if you upset with us, having a difficult time talking with us, you're getting emotional, or you refusing to believe, your responses is not directed at us. It's actually directed at the Most High, who have also um, given us His Holy Spirit. So we were sent by the Lord Himself, by the Spirit. So, yeah, you know, people, again, have a hard time talking with us and think that talking to the Most High himself would be a better option. It's, it's actually the worst option of who you would want to speak to. And again, the Lord tried speaking to you people before, but y'all were scared to. Y'all said, no, nah, we had talked to Moses. And then when the Lord intentionally put the fear of the Lord on you, and told you don't make any gods of gold and silver. Y'all did just that 12 chapters later. And leading up to that point, y'all was complaining about everything the Most High was doing for y'all. So, no, you can want to speak to the Lord, but the Lord don't want to speak to you. That's why he sent his men here in the last days. That's why the scriptures say, he has sent forth his apostles last. And the apostles is not just talking about in the New Testament. Because when you look up that word apostles, similar words will be prophets or preachers. And the Lord was saying prophets and preachers last, meaning in the last days. The Lord not going to get up off his throne where he comfortable at. He's not going to make time you know, for the rebellions of our people. So, 
Yeah, the Lord tried to talk to y'all before and y'all messed it up. Uh, Lord willing, that was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.